WandaVision, the new Disney Plus series, is a thing now. And uh, I've got a lot to say. So, uh, basically my history with the MCU is... I didn't get into them until about 2017. I think that's when I really started to get into MCU films. And that's mostly just because I didn't feel like watching them most of the time. So I watched uh, The Avengers. I didn't see it in theaters, but I saw it when it came out. So for the most part, I wasn't really into the series. They just kind of felt like the same repetitive formulaic thing. And then I saw Spider-Man Homecoming. That kind of brought me in again. And then I saw uh, Thor Ragnarok. And uh, that led to, you know, the big ones, Infinity War and Endgame. Um, so how do I feel about uh, them making this show in the first place? Well, I saw the, the, the promos for it, like the trailers, uh, a while ago. And I think the first trailers came out pre-2020. But what happened to me during 2020 was I just became, I guess, more negative towards the MCU. And maybe that's just because... I realized that there is more outside of this franchise and I didn't necessarily grow up on it like it's been a big part of my life that's for sure but like I didn't really get into them till 2017 so I went a long time without really caring that much about the series let me change this light so the Avengers I uh, really like it's a, it's a personal favorite of mine I've always liked it yeah so once 2020 hit I started to have, I had more time to watch movies, and so I got into a lot more films. You know, things that weren't as popular, a lot more indie films, A24, the good stuff. And I just kind of forgot about the MCU. And when I go back to revisit them, I realize they're actually not that great. And I didn't always want to admit it when I was in that phase I, I just kind of was like these are big event movies and i'm so excited but now that endgame is done i just don't really have that excitement anymore for the mcu and so when they announced wandavision and falcon winter soldier they just kind of seemed like things that i didn't care to see and i started seeing a couple of the trailers for the show when it started getting nearer and nearer to the release and i was like oh this this is gonna be different it's gonna be very different just that that's what i that's the vibe i got because you just see these weird sci-fi elements you see them in this weird sitcom from the 50s there's something wrong there and i like that because the thing about these marvel movies is after a while they kind of all start to blend into the background you you get so many of them and you kind of just get the rhythm of it after a while that they just kind of mold together I'm not saying they have interesting, they don't have interesting characters because they do. You know, I don't watch Ant-Man and the Winter Soldier and think, oh, these are the same thing, because they're not. Um, my problem mostly is uh, from a directing standpoint, from a visual standpoint, I like the characters, but like from like a filmmaking level, these movies kind of feel like the same thing. They all have this very gray brown color palette and they're not very fun to look at there's this and i was really interested to see what they would do because they keep talking about how phase four is going to be different they're gonna you know expand their boundaries that's that's something i was excited for after a while when you see explosions and iron man fighting giant creatures you get kind of used to it you know i, I like the characters and i like the movies but I usually just like them individually, but collectively, they they kind of all feel like the same thing. You know, you have so many of them, they just kind of feel like the same thing. Especially when it comes to action. All of these movies, when it comes to their action sequences, are all directed in the same exact way. I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. And so, when it comes to this show, it didn't look like there was going to be action. I didn't see all of this, these explosions and and giant creatures and people crushing each other with moons. No, I didn't see that. I saw something that was simple and they had a story to tell and they had characters to build. They wanted to do something different and unique and creative and ambitious. And so I was so, so hyped to see what they would do with this. And I saw the first two episodes and I loved them. 
The first two episodes are great. They work very well together. They have weird ambiguity into put into it. They have a lot of just strange things going on. Um, with this whole 50s black and white aesthetic going on. And for a lot of people, that can turn them off. When you see the trailers for Falcon Winter Soldier, you know what you're going to get. It's going to be action spy espionage stuff. And it's going to be the normal Marvel thing. For, I haven't seen it. I, I can't judge now, but like, you know. When it comes to this, those first two episodes are great. And I loved the, f the first two episodes. And then episode three, that's when it really started to bring that plot in a little more. Try to tie it into the universe. You know, because you see these characters in this situation. And you're like, there's something wrong here. Because everything seems fine. But I see these characters. And I know these characters. I don't know why they're here. And it just gave me this very... This feeling of this intrigue, this I, I wanted to know more. It was very engaging. And then episode three comes and they tie that in, you know, to Wanda's character and the things happening. It's still mysterious, don't get me wrong. But like, th they still, they, they pull it in, you know. And I liked that. But what I didn't know was that episode four was going to kind of ruin that for me and put a bad taste in my mouth. Episode four is essentially just like a, we're just gonna take a break from the normal storyline and we're just gonna show these random characters you don't know or care about and we're gonna make them the main characters, not technically, but the main characters of the outside of this Hex storyline. They just jump into it too quickly. It takes a lot of subtlety out. And so it was so disappointing for me, for someone who really wanted to see something really mysterious and unique and weird and off-putting and ambiguous. I wanted to see that. And then we get boring Marvel dialogue and just a bunch of people I don't care about walking around and really boring environments. It's just like very brown and moody for no reason. It's just like from a filmmaking level, it's boring. Like it's just, I hate using that word to describe things, but it's boring. It's just, it's bland, it's flat. They could do interesting things, but they don't. And then there's those characters. They have uh, Randall Park, Jimmy Woo, I think is the character's name. Um, Darcy, played by Kat Dennings, I think. And then Monica Rambo, who's um, a spoiler alert, I guess. She's from Captain Marvel. She's a little girl in that these three characters are very uninteresting and they don't really do anything with them in the show besides being like these characters you know we're making them the main characters they're gonna be like here now <laughs> i don't care about them i don't like being with them whenever it cuts to that it just bores me out of my mind it's it's not interesting and they don't give me any reason to make it feel like it's interesting but my biggest issue with episode four is how they take all that ambiguity out. They take all that, that fun and intrigue by giving us just boring dialogue that's just flat and very just exposition heavy where they're constantly just explaining plot details. And it just feels so forced and doesn't work. And now, now knowing this information with all of these truths being revealed all at once in this really overwhelming episode, they come to episode five and, and they just kind of go back to the normal thing that they were doing in the first two episodes. Three episodes, I mean. And it just doesn't make sense to me that they would give us this information and then just keep going, expecting me to, to care as much, and I don't. There are good scenes in episode five, don't get me wrong. I love the the part where uh, Vision um, like unpossesses that one guy's mind. It's really disturbing and weird. I like that. But that's not in there that much. And, and my, my, my problem is, is that they just, they have this episode four that just breaks the tension and breaks the fun 
in a really unsubtle way and they expect me to just keep going along with this mystery and intrigue with me already knowing that there's stuff going on and it just doesn't feel as interesting to me and episode five is really good i liked it a lot um and then we come to episode six which is my favorite episode of the series easily because it just feels like they they ramp it up a little more they bring the pacing up and they actually have a reason to tie in these really stale characters who don't do anything for the rest of the series um they just like bring them in and they actually give them a reason to be there and then you know the wanda and uh her brother and just a lot of things go on it's just a it's a very exciting episode and it got me hyped it felt the action in it felt unique and the sci-fi elements worked and i really liked that episode and then <laughs> there's episode seven which is weak unfunny kind of lifeless to me it doesn't feel like anything happens it's just this office style template because each episode kind of changes a different decade um how everything's being affected and that's basically all that episode seven is is just using this template it's really unfunny and stale it doesn't really work and then they the whole episode just builds up to this one twist and the twist is so dumb <laughs> I'm like, okay, it's just not done in a subtle way. It doesn't really work. I didn't really like it all that much. And they involve, I'm not spoiling this, by the way. This is a spoiler-free video. I probably should have said that at the beginning, but. So Catherine Hahn's character, um, Agatha, I think is her name, gets involved a lot more in the show later. And episode seven is where she really gets involved. <laughs> and she's not good. Like... Like, like, I don't have issues against Catherine Hahn. She's in a lot of movies I like. She's in Step Brothers. She's hilarious in that movie. But, like, she just doesn't fit this role. And you feel it. <laughs> she, the, the, this character feels so shoehorned in and doesn't really work. Episode 8, which leads to um, even more uh, backstory. And it feels... There are emotional bits, and I think that mostly works because Elizabeth Olsen is a great actress, and so she works really well in the story. And uh, she she makes those emotional moments work. Nothing else really works besides her. And it, it makes the character more interesting, but it mostly just provides backstory so you understand what the heck is going on in the finale because they don't really explain things in a subtle way. They have to give you these really uh, just plot-heavy episodes, and then just really light episodes, and then another plot-heavy one. That's how it feels to me. It feels very clunky. And so episode 8, having a lot of this just backstory stuff to explain to you, um, and then it leads us to the finale, which came out this morning, and I didn't love it. I thought it was a good finale. I think it worked for what it's trying to do, but I don't know. It just didn't make that much sense, because the show... I don't like how the show over explains itself and then doesn't explain anything for like an episode or two and then explains itself a lot again it just feels really clunky like i said and so when you come to this one it feels just confusing nothing really makes sense or connects or feels coherent to me because there's just this constant we need to shove everything into this stuff going on in the outside of this dome with with uh, randall park and monica rambo who's a boring character <laughs> Oh my god, Monica Rambo is just like there. She's just there and she doesn't really do much. When you're with those characters, it's mostly them just saying this not very good dialogue that's just way too obvious. Oh, then there's just a lot of light episodes. So then you come to the finale, which is just, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> and I don't feel much of an emotional connection either because they just didn't build things up in a way that felt right or it slowly progresses it just felt kind of forced and it didn't really work for me for me and so that's why that's um uh, this finale wasn't the greatest thing ever um that, and it also relied a lot on action and like i said marvel action is kind of the same thing and so i just don't feel that invested in these action sequences and then that leads to a finale that's just kind of like a yeah it was kind of this 
whole thing happened in three days kind of a thing and it was just these shenanigans that happened inside this dome and that's it <laughs> you know they, they lead to a conclusion that would be emotional if i cared more but they just didn't build it up enough i don't know this this this, this really bothers me so really i think the pros definitely go to elizabeth olsen and paul bettany who do a fantastic job great performances they bring a lot of charm and charisma also bring a lot of emotion it just would have been better if the script was good <laughs> and it's not very good i think you if you want to get information across you need to slowly unravel it subtly throughout all the episodes but it doesn't do that it just kind of like breaks to one episode or two episodes that just shove everything down your throat at once and that really bothers me a lot when you look at the big picture for the whole thing it's actually pretty small scale and i thought it would be much bigger like it would affect a lot more people this there's something really real going on here but it doesn't really explore that it just feels like one little adventure at the end it's kind of disappointing i felt pretty bummed out um today because of that finale it just this show this series was made for me it was made for me I, I wanted to see something ambitious and different from the mcu i really like the mcu's movies a lot of people in the critic community think i hate on the mcu for some reason i'm harsh sometimes and i criticize the movies a lot because if they're going to be this popular if they're going to make this much money you're going to make billions and billions of dollars there's got to be a reason. You've got to have like filmmaking merit. You've got to have like entertainment merit. And these movies for the most part are really good and I really enjoy them. But like there's a lot that are just really dumb and they make a lot of money. And I'm like no. I you you need to to realize that when I criticize something from the MCU, it's mostly just because I have high expectations for these movies. They're really successful. They make a lot of money. People love them. I'm obviously going to have high expectations. That's why I'm kind of critical. I don't take them that seriously either. I just, I, I try to look at them in a, in a fair way. And when it comes to this, this seems like something different. Something that's not as accessible, a little more ambitious. Not that safe stuff and i like that i wanted to see something like that and wandavision just didn't do that for me and it was really unfortunate because this just seems like my thing and it wasn't and it's too bad i think there's a lot of talent that went into it i can tell they put work into this thing and i was enjoying myself for a while and then when they just kind of give you a lot of exposition and introduce you to characters and storylines I just don't care that much about. It's hard for me to really stay invested. So, I'm going to have to say, it, like, it's not that great. I'm glad people are loving it. And if you loved the show, let me know down below. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts. But for me, it's, it's just felt disappointing. It was honestly really sad that i didn't love this because it's directly up my alley so for my scores for each episode because you i don't know if you care about hearing that first episode is a 9 out of 10 the second episode is a 9 out of 10 the third episode is an 8 out of 10 fourth episode is a 5 out of 10 fifth episode is an 8 out of 10 sixth episode is a 9 out of 10 the seventh episode is a 5 out of 10 the eighth episode is a 7 out of 10 and the ninth episode it's a 6 out of 10. my scores for all of them added them up found the average that's about 6.5 out of 10 or a 7 out of 10. i'd I'd probably say 7 out of 10. This is ambitious, and I really enjoyed it for the most part. Something that just bothered me was that it just didn't have enough of those memorable bits. Those things that really stick with you after a while. Nothing really hooked me in emotionally, so it kind of fizzles from my mind. I watch an episode, and I just kind of forget about it. That may be because this is a series and we're in a global pandemic and so we have to all stay inside and when we're at home it just is not the same when you watch a marvel movie in the theater it's very different you just there's this feeling of excitement and even like captain marvel my least favorite mcu movie i still kind of enjoyed when i saw it in the theater 
that's saying a lot. So honestly, this is a series I uh, respect a lot for what it was trying to do, but a lot of things I didn't like. And that's what brought it down for me. So I'm really disappointed, <laughs> um, but I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you so much, as always, for watching, guys. Please let me know what you thought of the WandaVision series down below, and I'll see you in my next video. This is Ethan Butler, and I'm out. Mm -hmm.